Well, we love Kotar in time. Look what's steaming in. Uh, it's a Thompson spirit and they're all waving at us and we're all waving at them. Oh, I'm so glad we're not there. That is St. George, the natural made island. And that is Our Lady of the Rock. It's on a man-made island. The island of Our Lady of the Rocks, which is a small man-made island. It existed until the middle of the 15th century. Until that time, here it was just a rock or a reef existing on which two brothers from Pelas, on 22nd of July in 1452, found the painting that you can see in the main altar nowadays. So it's a painting of Our Lady with the baby. And um, to people from Pelas, this was a miracle, as they could have found any other painting on that rock. But it was Virgin Mary, so they thought that she decided where she wanted to be. And that was the reason to them to build a church for Our Lady of the Rocks. They started bringing stones from Pedas with their boats here and sunk those stones here. But as the water is up to 22 meters deep in some areas, you can imagine they needed a lot of stones. So during the 16th century, they also sunk about 100 ships old ships as well as wrecks from battles to get more foundation in shorter time. But anyhow, building this island took them almost 200 years. Mm. The church itself is from the 17th century, so it's a small Baroque church, and you can see that it's very rich with all these paintings. The first row all around shows the prophets with the symbols from the Old Testament. The upper row, including the paintings on the ceiling, represent the life of Virgin Mary. The most interesting <coughs> part in here are all the pieces of silver that you can see all around. Mm -hmm. These are all ex voto, or votive donations from seamen, from fishermen, from people from this area who believe in Our Lady of the Rocks as their protectors. So whenever they had to pass dangerous situations at sea or illnesses or um, injuries, they were praying to Our Lady and after becoming well again or after returning home from sea, they came back with a present to her. That's how this collection already started in the 16th century and each of the silver tablets tells a story that has been survived. Containing more than 2,000 pieces, this is the world's biggest collection of this kind, of these silver votive plaques. Um, they are all made of silver as it was the most precious material from 16th to 18th century. Um, this is still an active church, so we still have services or messes in here, but also concerts of Baroque music that are held here um, twice or three times a year. Silver covered the painting of the Madonna and child, and if you could take a look at it and you see where their faces were, it's perfect. Behind the altar is a hole where, if you stick your hand in, which I did, but I can't video, so the rock that the painting was found on and they said that if you touch it you will have your wish come true and or absolve your sins. I did both. These are not crowns, these are all silver that were on the individual ships. They indicated the different shipmasters. It contains the, the archaeological finds from this region. The eldest parts are from Stone Age. They were found mm. in 1968 in a cave beyond Pelas, where the first citizens of the bay were living about 5,500 years ago. So this is Neolithic time. Um, then we next would be this chest. Um, in chests like this, people or families used to keep their treasures. <laughs> we have eight chests like this in the museum. Now this one is special. First of all, it's its age that makes it special. It's from the 15th century. It's one of the eldest mm. parts of furniture, so more than 500 years old. And um, you can see the three locks with three different keys. One key was for the owner, the second key was for his wife, and the third key for the eldest child. So this chest will only be opened in the present and under agreement of all three of them. So we have an early sign of democracy in the 15th century. <laughs>